So Saar Bis PSMA has had some amazing results to date. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on this product, both therapeutically but also diagnostically? And what do you think is is driving such dramatic responses with that product? Saar Bis PSMA is incredible, right? And I think, you know, we're one of the few companies, actually, we don't really know many others who have done some great science based on the knowledge we had at the time around these PSMA agents, for instance, and developed a new product. So this is a new product, just looking at the benefits and the limitations of the current PSMA agents, right? So we went back to the drawing board and built at the bench top this new product, right? To overcome what we saw of uh, as significant disadvantages, right? The lower uptake and retention into tumors was was okay, I guess, for a diagnostic and, and Plavicto has shown out to be good, but we wanted to fix that. So when we fixed it, we're developing just the, the two targeting moieties and optimization of the overall product. It was a fantastic result, yep. right? two to three times the amount of product getting into lesions is an incredible outcome, right? And then to see the amount of internalization, getting the product nice and close to the nucleus so it can destroy the DNA of cancer, right? That's what really we want to achieve and do that safely when you're combining it with a fantastic isotope like copper 67. What we're seeing now is the outcome of that hard work and dedication and focus in really optimizing the product, right? But we didn't just optimize the products. A key problem uh, has been the dosing schedule of Radio Farm is rather uh, dogmatic. It's been driven from precedence from a long period of time. The 7.4 gigabecquerels of lutetium coming from the original NETS work. And yeah, as opposed to like a structured dosimetry program. Yeah. So, um, and, and sometimes we get some feedback to say, well, why don't you just dose 100 patients? Well, we're using a gold standard dose optimization, dose expansion uh, regime, not just to be an also ran. We've not, we're not that as a company. Um, if people are looking to invest in also rands, there's enough out there, right? Just want to bring a product to market quickly without any optimization. And unfortunately, you know, INT, lutetium suffered that consequence, right? Let's go out here and 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 literally have to deal with this internally, right? They, they you know, they, they were sold. Basically, an idea: if you dose less, you're going to get a better outcome, right? With a with with a you know product that is it better than PSMA six one seven, the Plavicta product. I don't think so, right? So that was always going to be a bad strategy. And Lily now I have to overcome that, right? We haven't gone that road. Let's get the dose right. Let's dose higher because everyone's telling you, telling, you know, you know, the, when I say that, the the people who know, the people who are running the clinical trials and those sorts of things are saying Plavicto is not dose optimized. Yeah. It's correct. not, right? So um, so what we've found when you put all of that together and you start dosing patients, you get a better response. Right, so we've only done a single dose escalation at this point in time. We started very low at four gigabecquerels, and we're getting efficacy at that level. Right, we went to eight gigabecquerels, got incredible outcomes. Right, went to twelve gigabecquerels, and even in patients that were incredibly sick, we're getting good outcomes. We're getting responses. Right, even when these other agents are failing, it's an incredible outcome. Right, so so they're the reasons why. Uh, you know, we're just getting much better therapeutic benefits, we think, at this point in time. Much more uptake into the lesions. Uh, it stays there over time and much better outcomes. And so do you think, Alan, you've already seen these amazing responses just after a single dose. Is it right to think that multiple doses, um, that can drive a, a better therapeutic response in some patients? Well, we've seen at that 8 gigabecquerel dose level, mm -hmm. we dosed one of the just one of the patients in that in that cohort twice and suddenly we had an incredible response where their PSA levels are undetectable and still are today yep. right uh, undetectable disease when we're trying to image with PSMA and we're following up now with a CT scan there was a CT scan done shortly after the the last dose right two of the lesions had a complete response one fell from 27 millimeters to 12 millimeters at the time of imaging yeah right incredible response missed a complete response by two millimeters right that was with two doses so 
In short, yes. And so we're at the 12 giga Becquerel doses now, right? And we're in this um, uh, two-dose cohort. There's been a drive, obviously, to increase that under the clinical trial to up to four. But the two dose is the, the, the critical uh, measure for us when we're looking at safety here. But um, are we expecting a good response from that second dose? Yes. Yes, we are. Right. So, but how many do we have to do? If we're getting such you know dramatic responses at you know, eight gigabecquerels, then how many doses? And, and people keep asking us, what's your, what's your dosing regime look like? You well, don't know yet, right? You have to wait let's and do see. the science. Exactly. Yeah. Let's not just have six doses and shoot them off, you know, one after the other. In that eight gigabecquerel patient, they don't need a dose today. Correct. Yeah. You know, so we'll continue to generate that data. We'll continue to see what the science tells us. At this point in time, they were incredibly excited, right? The data, is it is it where we thought it was going to be? No, it's a, that was an amazing result. First patient we ever dosed at a therapeutic dose twice has the, this incredible result. And then all the other patients around in that 8 gigabecquerel and 12 gigabecquerel really responding really well of single doses. We can't wait for this to roll out this year, you know? We'll get this uh, current cohort done. You know, uh, as we tell the market, it, they've seen historically how fast this trial's recruiting. Mm -hmm. It is. There's a lineup, you know, to get on. Uh, we'll get this current cohort done, uh, cohort four, done uh, with the multi-dosing, and then we'll go into this expanded cohort. And we'll try and get all of that done as far as dosing is concerned this year, at least by the start of next year. Uh, and then there's follow-up on that. And we're incredibly excited as to, you know, what that data could say.